Good morning everyone, how are you doing? My name is Infrabrick, and in this video I'll be teaching you how to solve the Mega Megamix. Something we need to get done first is notation. Now it is exactly the same as cubic puzzles, but for scrambling it is slightly different. So if we look at part of an official scramble here, then you'll see something a bit unusual. It's the R++ and D++ part of it. Now what that is, is you hold the puzzle with white on top and green in front, or as close as you can get to it, and you hold the left, in this case purple, side. And a plus plus indicates clockwise, minus minus is anti-clockwise. That is clockwise twice and anti-clockwise twice. So this would be R plus plus, D minus minus, R minus minus, and D plus plus. And then there's at the end, there's just a U move to mix up this bit. So anyway, let's get on with the scrambles. Uh, I'm not going to put up an official scramble just because it takes too long and it's kind of confusing. So just feel free to turn randomly. So you should have something that looks like this. Absolute madness and absolute beauty. So the first step in solving a Megamix is somewhat similar to solving a 3x3, which is getting a cross on one side. I have to get these five edge pieces in their proper position. Uh, I see this red piece here could go over there. So, well, while this orange piece is already in here, move that over up, over again, I messed up. We have orange here and red there. The blue edge is here and move that over there so we have these to be already in. And the last two are here. Uh, purple is right there, move that in, and green is in the back here. So there you go. Now the next step is again similar to 3x3, three three, it's getting the first two layers in. Now you can either have a pair here that's already matched up and put in both uh, at the same time, or put in a corner like that and then put in and then put in the edge like, like this. Either way, it's not important, you have to get those two in. Doesn't matter how you do it. I'll do one more and then two here. Doesn't really matter how you do it. This corner is already in, so I'm just gonna quickly look for the edge. It's back here. That over. Now put this edge in here. Like that. Got two more to do. Then that's done. Then there's a corner here and an edge here. You can, as I said, do them separately. One more like that. And now the last one is right here and in the back here. I'm going to bring them together and then do that to match them up. And there you go. Our first two layers entirely done. So now what we need to do is get a V, which is these three pieces, a corner and two edges. I personally call it a V, I have no idea what it's actually called. First we put in a corner of red, green and yellow, it doesn't need to be in this order, just a corner. Then we have one of the two edges next to them, like that. Then what we do is move this over and then insert the final edge, which is here. They're just like a beginner's method on 3x3. Three three. And like that. So we'll do this once more and then I'll just skip the other three. Have one corner, needs to go in here. Like that. Then either one of these two edges goes at the side. And there's one here. You don't need to do that, it's what I prefer. 
Anyway, there we have that, and move it over. I put this in just again like a beginner's method. Like that, bam. That, and move it back down. Do that, the race more. Now we have all five of these in, it's time to move on to F2L again. So it's basically just this again. It's as simple as that. We have a corner and an edge we need to match up. Like so. And then put into their proper place. I'm gonna say this again. Uh, you can also just put in a corner first and then an edge. It does not matter. You just need to eventually have them together. First we have to get all five edges flipped correctly, just like on 3x3, then we worry about everything else. So in this case, we have one edge flipped, and just so you know, you will always have one edge flipped. So this is just like this case on 3x3, where you have no edges flipped. So what we need to do is hold it here, specifically, in the left side, and then to do F, R, U, -pram, R, -pram, U, -pram, F, -pram, to have three edges like that. In this case is much similar like this one where we have two edges flipped in a triangle. So here, then do that. There you go, all five edges flipped. So now we go to edge permutation. This is a very easy step and it's an algorithm you already know. It's a soon. What we need to do is first find one edge that's already matched up with its center or you can just move one over like here, it doesn't matter, you just need to get one like there. Then do soon. Like that. That should cycle these edges about. Uh, there are actually two cases of this. What I just did cycles these three. There's another one which is which is sort of similar to this, which cycles these two, and that one right there. So since we only have one of them in, just we can do whichever one we fancy, just as soon like that. And now here we get this orange one and this pink one together. Now we need to do that second one that you just said, which is these two and that one. It's similar to as soon, but we start with a U2 beforehand. So like that. Now all edges are permuted correctly. Now we move on to corner permutation. This is a very this is a very simple algorithm. It is it is this. This is that. But the one thing we're changing with here is instead of doing a U, we're doing a U2, keeping the same direction. So what this does is it cycles these three corners here and leaves these two uh, solved. So that's why we need. That's why in this case we have these two, which are already solved. So, so we just do that. Like so, which actually solved everything. Pretty neat. There is one other thing I do have to mention, which is if you have this one and these two in a triangle shape. What you need to do is move this corner over, then then hold it like this so that these three get moved about and these two stay still. Now this one is not solved, so we just do it again. Now it is solved, move that back. Now finally twist these two. Anyway, moving on the final step, which is corner orientation. This is very easy, and it's just this. That, twist that one, then move any others in place, and continue. Last one. Now all of them are done, do the AUF, and that's everything solved. 
And that is how you solve the Mega Minx. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I think I'm supposed to tell you to subscribe, but uh, I don't really want to do that. Goodbye!